أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلاته وسلامه وبركاته على سيد المرسلين وخاتم الأنبياء والمصطفى من عباده أولنا وسابقنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم Dear brothers, dear sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We rejoin this week in the company of Allah's everlasting instructions, His enlightening words, and the penetrating meanings that He has endowed us with in this straightforward Qur'an. The last time, and as we all know now, we are tracing the zigzagging history of Bani Israel. Uh, I, I want to mention here that, and I'll probably have to mention this quite a few times, that there are ayat in the Qur'an that the word Bani Israel, literally two words, Bani Israel, are mentioned many times in the ayat of the Qur'an. There are other times in the ayat of the Qur'an that the word Yahud or Alladhina Hadu are mentioned and some people because of the maybe um, shortcoming of trying to distinguish between Bani Israel and Yahud they as is the case with other words in the Quran other apparently synonymous words in the Quran they lump them together. This is one area that has to be thought through and has to be made crystal clear that there is a difference, as subtle as it may seem sometimes, there is a difference between the wording Bani Israel and the wording Yahud or the, the related words to these two pronouns. There are some ayat in, in the Qur'an that mention Yahud and Alladhina Hadu, and we have not covered that territory yet. Insha'Allah, after we clear the ayat in the Qur'an that detail the wrongdoings of Bani Israel, uh, we will go back and visit those ayat in the Qur'an that speak about Yahud or Alladhina Hadu. Suffice it to say here, just as an introductory uh, remark to be thought about by you, inshallah, that the, this group of people who have the combined description of Yahud and Bani Israel, they think of themselves, they define themselves in two in, within two definitions. One of them is a religious definition, and the other one is a racial or ethnic or racist or tribal or nationalist definition. And those are, that's when the word Bani Israel is pertinent. So just keep that in your mind as maybe a seed of thought and hopefully as you read more into the meanings of the Quran or as we explain more the 
these uh, growing meanings in the Quran, you will begin to realize how accurate Allah's words are in portraying this group of people in the past, in the present, and into the future. So the last time we were with Bani Israel in a scene in which there was a challenge between the Pharaonic uh, system in Egypt and Musa alayhi salam. And the Pharaoh had summoned all of his paranormal experts who were in control or in possession of some type of knowledge that can manipulate the visual sense of those who are watching. And we said that they, these um, uh, specialists that the Pharaoh had summoned from all over his country, they came with uh, the last or the most recent uh, knowledge to manipulate uh, the visualization of the audience. And in some narratives, and I'm very careful with narratives that seem to have some biblical origins, uh, because some of information in the Bible is reliable, some information in the Bible is not reliable, not because the, the Bible as it was revealed by Allah is not reliable, absolutely not, but because the ruling classes and the clergy classes that followed both, that came after both prophets Musa and Isa, they did a job on the Bible. So uh, we can authenticate information in the Bible if it agrees with the last scripture that Allah has revealed, and that is this Quran that we are uh, concentrating our minds on. If it agrees, that's fine. If it disagrees, we just put it on the side there and says and, and say to it, uh, yeah, this, this. If it contradicts, we say, I, obviously not. This is not from Allah. This is not what was included in the original scriptures of both the Torah and the Injil. So, it, one of these, one of a piece of information that comes from that biblical context is that these what they call magicians or sorcerers, when they came and they, uh, <clears throat> they placed their ropes and their sticks in front of, you can, you can almost visualize an amphitheater set up and the audience in the thousands or tens of thousands watching this uh, spectacle. Uh, so that piece of information says that they came with 70 loads of sticks and ropes. Of course, a load at that time didn't mean a freight train, and it did not mean a truck. The loads of those times were probably camels or horses or mules or donkeys at such, 70 of them. So this was a, a tremendous amount of ropes and sticks, which they threw out uh, to have people watch these ropes and sticks move as if they were snakes. When Musa placed his stick, everyone saw Musa had a stick, a cane, his um, lifelong companion there, his cane, when he threw it down, it gobbled up so to speak, all of this amount of uh, instruments that they, the 70 loads that they put down there at one time, probably filled all of the field. And when these manipulators, these scientific manipulators, when they saw what happened, the ayah in the Quran says, ayah 118, فَوَقَعَ الْحَقِّ 
وبطل ما كانوا يعملون The expression وقع الحق is so strong It didn't say فظهر الحق or فجاء الحق You could, it could have said الحق now truth and justice manifested itself Truth and justice now appeared Truth and justice now came for everyone to see It says وقع الحق Truth and justice now came down on them. فَوَقَعَ الْحَقِّ وَبَطَلَ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And whatever they were doing, because these, these experts knew from their own lifelong experience that what Musa was doing was none of their uh, type of... Uh, manipulative science how can one cane when musa throws it down how can it ingest all of those ropes and those sticks that they had they knew these manipulators they knew that they were defeated and not only were they defeated they were humiliated in the most pathetic way. It, to them, it seemed like they exposed themselves. They, they said, you know, there, there's something very original, very authentic, and very truthful about Musa. <clears throat> At that moment, <clears throat> remember the Pharaoh is there, and the spectators, the, let's say, with... Uh, an educated guest, tens of thousands of spectators, viewers, who saw all of this, among them Banu Israel and the average uh, Egyptians. Uh, everyone was watching, along with the Pharaoh, of course. And what happened at that moment when Musa annulled what they were, what these scientific experts of the pharaoh did what happened when when uh, the ayah before that the haq came down on them and it was the weight of that haq that caused them to go into prostration it, the ayah did not, did not say فسجدوا, because it wanted to connect what they did with what Musa had just do, uh, done. وَأُلْقِيَ السَّحَرَةُ سَاجِدِينَ قَالُوا آمَنَّا بِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ The... Uh, <coughs> inexperienced and we have some of these people all around they would say look at the Quran here it, it, it's inconsistent it's not logical it's inconsistent it said that these magicians let's call them magicians they're more than that but they perform their sajda first and then they express their iman after that. In real life, what would happen is you would express your iman first and then do your sajda after that. But here the ayah say, وَأُلْقِيَ السَّحَرَةُ سَاجِدِينَ قَالُوا آمَنَّا بِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ This is how some individuals some of them are Orientalists. Some of them are just troublemakers, mental troublemakers. They call themselves uh, experts on Islam or Islamologists or Ar Arabologists or um, uh, Islamic careerists. So, yeah, they have so many of these titles, professors. And they come and say, not understanding in a sufficient way the ayat of the Qur'an. And this is what happens. And some of these people who say these types of things are Muslims. 
And some of them are not, you know, just simple Muslims. Some of them claim that they have graduated from Hawzas and from Islamic universities in these types of places. And they say, oh yeah, the Quran is, um, is a revelation from Allah, but it, it, these are not the words of Allah. I don't want to, you know, uh, go into that mentality there, but they would come to these two ayat right here. Wa ulqiya sahara tu sajidin qalu amanna bi rabbil alamin. They fail all of these together, whether they are outside the fold of Islam or within the fold of Islam. They fail to understand the relationship, the the practical relationship between what happened. What happened was, if you ever encounter these types of uh, shallow uh, troublemakers or uh, mental agitators, if you ever uh, encounter any of them, uh, just tell them, explain to them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very accurate in his description. and. The emphasis is on what is done before it is on what is said. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that these manipulators of the Pharaoh, these highest class um, erudites who came with their latest um, chapter of knowledge breakthroughs to deceive what people are seeing, to deceive people in what they are seeing. What happened was when the, when the truth and justice of Musa came down on them, they went, they performed their sajda or their uh, physical expression of acquiescence to the truth that Musa, the truth and justice that Musa was presenting everyone with. Then they said, Qalu amanna bi Rabbil alami. So their Iman first was an internal Iman, followed by a sajda, followed by the expression of Iman. A person can have Iman in themselves first and then express it physically and then after that express it verbally. And there's no contradiction here. And the reason they didn't have the scholastic time period to comfortably say, uh, wait a minute here, we want to withdraw for a few hours and think about everything that happened. The drama, the dramatic uh, feat of Musa alayhi salam had a direct and a powerful impact on their psychology. And this is the way they exactly behaved. And this is the way Allah's words precisely described it. قَالُوا آمَنَّا بِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ The Pharaoh is there. Banu Israel are there. The Egyptian public is there. And they came out publicly, vociferously, confidently, and said, آمَنَّا بِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ the Pharaoh said, I'm Rabbul Alameen. What are you talking about? You see the arrogance of those who rule. He thought that he could, he could um, use his aura and prestige to shock them back into his domain of control. But they were beyond that because they, they, they witnessed with all of their senses the originality of Musa. He said, I'm Rabbul Alameen. The Pharaoh said to them. They said, 
Rabbi Musa, the Rabb, the sustainer, the Lord of Musa. He said, I'm his, I'm his Lord. See, the word Lord, also, there's a religious meaning to it, and there's a civic meaning to it, a social meaning to it. Even in Old English, it's not used right now, but if you go back to English literature a few hundred years ago, a person would say to his master, my Lord. He didn't, he didn't mean my God. So here, uh, the Pharaoh meant it in both ways. I am the Lord of Musa. Remember, Musa was brought up in the family of the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh's wife was disposed towards Musa and she became a committed Muslimah. But it, so in that sense, I am Musa's Lord. And besides that, I'm the Pharaoh. So I am the higher Lord, the divine Lord of Musa also. And so to cut off the extension of the debate with the Pharaoh, they said, Waharud. Rabbi Amanna bi Rabbi Alameen, Rabbi Musa wa Harun. What is he going to say? He's, uh, he's the Lord of Harun in both the civic and religious sense. So they uh, closed the mouth of the Pharaoh who could not speak uh, to that. Then the, the way the Pharaoh in his um, uh, power arrogance expresses himself. قَالَ آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ قَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ قَبْلَ أَنْ آذَنَ لَكُمْ You are expressing your faith and commitment to him, meaning to Musa. Before I give you permission to do that, he's still living in uh, the false world of power that he's been intoxicated with throughout his royal life. قَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ قَبْلَ أَنْ آذَنَ لَكُمْ You have become uh, confident in Musa before I give you, before I gave you permission إِنَّ هَذَا لَمَكْرٌ مَكَرْتُمُوهُ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ Obviously, he said, Pharaoh is saying, obviously this is a conspiracy that you have undertaken in El Medina, in this city. لِتُخْرِجُوا مِنْهَا أَهْلَهَا To cause its inhabitants to exit from it. فَسَوْفَ تَعْلَمُونَ Now, you see, to begin with, it was the Pharaoh who was conspiring. But when the table was turned against him, when the winds were not sailing in his direction, now he became paranoid. And he's saying that this is a conspiracy against him. Because in he knows, the Pharaoh knows, that Banu Israel and the Egyptians were interacting in society. So it may have been the influence of Bani Israel, and obviously some of Bani Israel were privy to some of this paranormal information. And so now the Pharaoh is saying that instead of our influence as rulers, as a system impacting in our desired way Bani Israel, it's Banu Israel now who are impacting our system so that people will leave this whole civic order. And then here comes the threat. وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ مِنْ خِلَافٍ وَلَأُصَلِّبَنَّكُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ 
This is the ultimate type of punishment, cruel, severe, and tortuous as it is to cut off their limbs diagonally, the right foot with the left arm or the left arm with the, or the left foot with the right arm. Could mean also, not only arm, could also mean hands. And I'm going to crucify all of you. Remember, Pharaoh here is speaking to his own class of manipulators who use science to affect public opinion. Pharaoh didn't turn to Musa and threatened him. He threatened his own. They say, for sure, we are going to revert back to our sustainer. No one denies death. They didn't know we're going to die one day or the other. So whichever way it is, and at whichever time it is, we're going back to our sustainer. There's a uh, comment by some of the uh, those who look at the Quran. You see, if I use the word, there's certain words I would use, but they, because they have a certain connotation, sometimes I try to avoid it. But I think... Sometimes I'll let it out and say some of the mutasawwifa, uh, some of the arifin, uh, Sufis, they would say it's astonishing concerning these, um, th this uh, class of uh, Pharaonic experts. They began their day Saharatan Kafara as um, manipulators who were in denial of Allah and they ended their day shuhada barara as uh, very acquiescent, obedient martyrs. They go on, they didn't, they didn't just stop at that. They had enough confidence right now to tell the Pharaoh, their master or their ex-master. Not only thing you'll be doing is taking revenge against us because we have identified and acknowledged the ayat of our sustainer, the impossibilities that occurred, the biblical language for that is the miracles that just took place, lamma ja'atna, when it came our way. That's all that happened. Rabbana afrigh alayna sabra wa tawaffana muslimin. O oh, our sustainer, pour patience upon us and have us endure our final expiration in a state of submission to you. They were willing to give their lives because they understood that Musa was for real, but it should we should all we should keep in mind that so far the tension is not between Musa and the Pharaoh. The tension is between the Pharaoh and the the highest caliber manipulative scholars that he had. وَقَالَ الْمَلَأُ مِنْ قَوْمِ فِرْعَوْنَ now, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
is refocusing our, our attention on the mala of the Pharaoh, the policy makers of the Pharaoh, the movers and shakers of society of the Pharaoh, the mainstream media personalities of the Pharaoh, those who fill the attention and the minds and the emotions of the public with the information that is targeting that public. That is al-mala. قال الملا وقال الملا من قوم فرعون اتذر موسى وقومه ليفسدوا في الارض ويذرك والهتك they said to the pharaoh are you going to leave musa and his people to to uh, agitate throughout the land in a destructive manner when at the same time he is parting with you and your divinities. You see, the Pharaoh was an earthly divine, and above him in his system there were uh, heavenly divines. And there's another qira'ah for this. وَيَذَرَكَ وَإِلَاهَتَكْ Not وَآلِهَتَكْ In your divinity. He's parting company with you and your divinity. The Pharaoh retorted, We will kill their sons and we will spare their women, for indeed we have. very firm sub subjugating or oppressing control over them. May Allah give us the patience to understand this history in the world that we are in so that the knowledge that we have can take its course in exposing the leaders and decision makers now who are bowing down to the contemporary children of Israel in their errors, in their prejudice, and in their racism. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم صلى الله على محمد وآل محمد and inshallah we will reconvene next week والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته